My name is Nisha Davis Wafon from MSC Finance, and the real work company of my choice in this presentation is Pfizer. This presentation will be divided into company overview, corporate governance, SRI stocks, and recommendations. If there's any questions, please feel free to ask me at the end of my presentations. Pfizer is a publicly traded global biopharmaceutical corporation headquartered in New York City. The company was first established 172 years ago. Pfizer is the manufacturer of many recognizable drugs. As the company expanded, the shareholder-owned company operates in 180 countries. It employs more than 78,000 people worldwide. Pfizer was among top five most valuable company in, in its industry with a market capitalization of around 310 billion US dollars as of market close on December 13, mm -hmm. 2021. Several other global drugs manufacturers present Pfizer with significant competitions. They include Roach Holdings, Eli Lilly's & Co's, Avi, Novartis, and Merck's & Co's. The principal market for Pfizer common stock is the NYSE LSE in the sixth Swiss stock exchange. With a cash dividend paid of 8.4 billion US dollars as of December 2020. Moving on to corporate governance. The definitions of corporate governance most widely used is the system by which companies are directed and controlled. More specifically, it is the framework by which the various stakeholders' interests are balanced. The difference between one tier and two tier board structures can be seen in the figure where the two tier board system consists of two levels of controls over the board of directors. Pfizer as an American company is developed as a one-tier board with a statement of a shareholder's outreach program. This one-tier board invests both managerials and supervisory responsibilities in one unified board of directors. In theory, this single board is traditionally divided between CEO, a chairman where oftentimes a CEOs, and independent directors. The CEO is now commonly the only executives on the board as a result to the movement towards independent boards. The other executives, such as CFO, COO, or CLO, may report directly to the board, but normally are not the members of the board. Pfizer has designated their CEO as both CEO and chairman, where a strong power in CEO duality is good since it creates a clear direction of a single leader. But on the other hand, it could create a segregation of duty, where the solutions of this will be discussed further on. Role and compositions of the board of directors at Pfizer is that the board of directors got elected by the shareholders and is responsible for decision making as a whole. It selects CEOs and other members of the senior management teams, which is charged with the conduct of company's business. And the board acts as an advisor to senior management and monitors its performance by independent directors. The board is responsible for planning for successions to assist the board. The CEO annually provide the board with an assessment of the potential to succeed. The independent directors elect a chairman of the board. And since the chairman is also CEOs and is not independent, they also need to elect elite independent directors who provide an important point of contact for principal shareholders to raise an issues and concerns in order to ensure the investors that there is an independent counterbalance to the share. Pfizer corporate governance highlights has covered areas on competency framework for governance by performing the following important policies. With a diversity reflecting genders, ethnic backgrounds, and professional experience board with 12 members, the board consisted of a majority of independent directors who either meets or exceeds the independence requirements of NYSE. 11 out of 12 are independents. The only one that are non-independents are the chairmans and CEOs. The board will conduct a self-evaluation of their performance at least annually, and it is important determinants for continuing service. The company has a full orientation and continuing education process for board members. Pfizer based on the policy of how management speak for the companies. By providing full transparency, ensure that the stakeholders can have confidence in the decision makings and management process of the company. Cover accountability refers to the obligations and responsibilities to give an explanation or reasons for the company's actions and conducts. Better corporate governance can be done by raising the issues of accountability for business performance. The most common business performance analysis is based on financial measures and includes various accounting ratios. Where Pfizer has stated in the proxy statement about shareholder rights and accountability that there are annual elections of all directors and shareholders has an ability to call special meeting and proxy access right. 
Moving on to the remunerations and ownership requirements at Pfizer. The objective is to create sustainable future growth and long-term shareholder value. Where Pfizer's short-term financial goals are revenue, EPS, and cash flow from operations, the long-term goals are based on five and seven years shareholders' returns. For the CEO, NEOs, and directors, they are subjected to robust Pfizer stocks ownerships requirement listed. Socially Responsible Investing, or SRI, is an investing strategy that aims to generate both social change and financial returns for an investor. SRI can include companies making a positive sustainable or social impacts and exclude those making a negative impact. In 1999, Carroll coined the Pyramid of Corporate Social Responsibilities. The pyramid outlined organizational priorities and sees four sets of responsibilities that help characterize business and their responsibility to society, where an ethical decision making can be measured through AA models or Tucker Five Factors model. For social responsibility and financial performance at Pfizer is that Pfizer has a revenue boosting treatment to help smoker quits regarding Sean Chicks. Growth trends and if Pfizer can continue to reach revenue targets, it may boost Pfizer share price. While there is not yet conclusions on how social responsibility has a significant effect to financial performance, however, impact investing on SRI stocks offers managers and policymakers an alternative framework to assess the positive movements to benefit society achieving the sustainable development goals through long-term value creations. In March 2020, Pfizer has announced the completion of 1.25 billion US dollars 10-year sustainability bonds, paying an interest semi-annually of 2.625%. This is Pfizer's first ever sustainability bond and a first for a biopharmaceutical company. Investment approaches assumes that all information is incorporated in stock price, but this approach only captures the financial value in the financial risks and return space. By contrast, the adaptive market hypothesis states that it takes time for market to adapt to new risks, such as ESG risk factors. Based on ESG risk rating as of December 14, 2021, compared to competitors, Pfizer rated as moderate from an incident on business ethics. In measuring value creations, financial tools are crucial. In this presentation, an EPS, ROCE, BCG matrix, NPV analysis, and real options would be the main discussions. The BCG matrix illustrates how each business unit contributes to the growth and profitabilities of the conglomerate. Pharmaceutical industry contribute over 90% of their company's revenues with a high market share, where it is a star regarding the BCG matrix framework. The company should make a decision to improve the star revenues by investing in R&D marketing and other related factors at achieving the highest profits. The animal healthcare products market growth is improving. However, it is not yet considered a high market share, so it is a still a question mark of the companies. If the whole business process is nurtured, then it can be converted into a star. While the copyright and other is the cash cow and can improve to the question mark if Pfizer is well able to manage and bring a large revenues. Docs are low-growth, low-share products that may generate enough cash to maintain themselves but do not promise to be a large source of cash. Where the real options might apply in choosing whether investment should be made in order to put it as a question mark or to liquidate the doll. Now let's take a look at EPS. EPS or earning per share are the company net's earning or losses attributed to common shareholders per diluted share base, which included all convertible securities and debts, options, and warrants. According to Pfizer, the peak of EPS in quarter 4, 2020, resulted from a revenue was mainly due to the pharmaceutical industry of COVID-19 vaccines, co-developed with BioNTech. This contributed a 154 million dollars in revenue during the quarter, where the value created was demonstrated in the BCG matrix. For a return on capital employed, it is a capital efficiency ratio used to measure the firm profitability relative to the capital employed. In comparison to competitors, 
Pfizer return on capital employed of 15.8% ranks in the 88.3 percentile for the sector, and the peak in October 2021 are also resulted from the COVID-19 vaccines. Discounted cash flow techniques included of profitability index, net present value and internal rate of return. NPV are crucial for investment proposal. If a project's NPV is positive, the project should be accepted. For Pfizer virtual CIO case study from Harvard Business School case study, using NPV analysis is that while calculating NPV at 6% discount rate, it comes out as a positive. So while calculating NPV at 15%, which is far higher than 6%, in a stable industry with a weak competition, up to 15% discount rate can be counted as a good benchmark. But if the risk common is high in the industry, then we should go for a higher discount rate of 20%. However, the net NPV at 20% is negative. So ideally, we can select the project if macro and micro factors don't allow financial managers to discount cash flow at lower discount rates, such as 15%. In theory, if a required rate of return or discount rate is chosen correctly by finance managers, then the stock price should change in the same amount of NPV. In the real world, share price also reflects various other factors that can be related to both macro and micro environments. So sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, and break even should also be conducted to better understand the risks, such as change in market size, market share, and variable cost. Because traditional valuation tools such as NPV ignores the value of flexibility, real options are important in strategic and financial analysis. So Pfizer has showed the option to expand in 2021 on a major expansion modular acceptive process sync project. The project was approved in 2018, providing Pfizer with a 50% break in taxes for 15 years. And the option to abandon is that Pfizer has announced plans to end its research efforts to discover new drugs for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So it is a Pfizer's struggles and it needed to delay with the gene therapy pipelines where resulted from the operations of a COVID-19 vaccine. How would you do a recommendation related to the expansion of the company? Um, on the three main topics I have presented, SWOT analysis will be used in recommendations in relation to business expansions. For SRI and CSR, the company should lower the price of medicines, circulate and unapproved drugs, shut down upcoming low-cost biosimilars, and link CO compensation to at least one non-financial ESG targets. This could result in attracting more investors with a concern about environmental issues, and the value of the company can be expanded. So, for value creations, focus on a long-term growth and not depending on the blockbuster products, which is prone to be got invaded from competitors. For example, if COVID are gone, what would happen to APS of that quarter if they delayed the new projects? Where the increase in R&D expense on new products to expand on market share and gain more revenues are also another recommendation. And they should really use a real options on the project expansion planning. What is your recommendation on Pfizer corporate governance? My recommendation on corporate governance is that there should be a separation of CEO and chairman. Two roles as the same person with an election of lead independent director seems a little more than a palliative. If a director believes there ought to be a separation of power between management and the board, they ought to insist on the appointment of a non-executive chairman, where these issues can may affect investor concerns where shareholder value could be endangered. This can be compared to their competitors, where the practice widely adopted in UK and other countries is that keeping the chairman independent to double shakes and keep their eyes on CEOs, which will result in pushing and pulling strategies with wider expertise of knowledge on decision makings leads to future expansions such as success in a major deals. In 2019, Ian Reid, a former CEO of Pfizer and a chairman, does not succeed in Pfizer proposed mergers with allergens due to the fact that he miscalculated the political risks to his due. Also, in 2014, he failed to take over UK-based AstraZeneca. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me more. How Pfizer make the director effective? Um, Governor Expert has repeatedly cited Pfizer as a role model for board best practice. 
One of five star string is the way it cultivates and trains the governing committees of the board. The board effectiveness depends on the quality of the individual directors, on the relationships amongst them, and on the joint work of the group. Pfizer has fostered an environment that encouraged the right result in all three of these areas. How did the company should deal with the agency problem? The company attempted to deal with the agency problem by doing profit-related pays and share options through director compensations and ownership requirements. By doing this, the executive would want to maximize the value creations to shareholders in terms of profits. Thank you.